these six zodiac pairs are most likely to have immature emotional relationships. In today's video, we're going to go over the six pairs that are most likely to have an immature relationship. Emotions are complex and layered phenomena, but oftentimes emotions get stuck on the childish level, unfulfilled and unrecognized, left to play out a deeper and more primal nature. When paired wrong, Sun signs can evoke the worst emotional responses and patterns in each other, which is why it's best to be on the lookout and to take things extra slow and carefully when found in these combinations. Number 1. Aries and Cancer Both Aries and Cancer are cardinal signs, which means that they don't know how to budge from each other. Aries is very combative and immature in their nature, and Cancer is very moody and crude in their emotions. When Aries doesn't get what they want, they get very pissy, competitive, and prone to tantrums. Similarly, Cancer gets very passive-aggressive, snappy, and prone to crying when they don't get their way. Combine these two and take into consideration their elements, fire and water, and you get a real explosion of tempers and tantrums. Aries might be more straightforward and push in their demands, but you won't find Cancer taking it all up in silence for long. Cancer is a violent sign the same as Aries. Their pincers often can cut deeper and more painful than Aries's horns. But Aries is highly competitive, which means that they'll make a competition that they can win, even out of a lover's fight. There's only so much emotional damage that Cancer can take before snapping entirely and breaking things off, and Aries will hardly recover from not winning that fight as well. So they'll tend to go back for more. Number 2. Taurus and Leo these two are a real show to be around. Both of them are fixed signs, which means that neither of them will budge, and they both don't want things to change, but neither of them knows how to remain the same with each other. What a nightmare! Leo is prone to hissy fits and public outbursts whenever their pride and ego are hurt, and Taurus prefers to deal with emotional problems within their four walls. Leo will cause a scene in public, and Taurus will simply leave, which will make Leo even more aghast and out of their minds. When they come back home, Taurus's piping hot anger will seep through their every pore, and they'll still try to be reasonable and to smooth things over, as long as Leo admits their faults and apologizes, which will never happen, of course. So then we have an immovable object that's met with an unstoppable force, and no solution. Taurus will hate the idea of losing stability in the form of a passionate partner, no matter how much that said partner gets under their skin. And Leo will hate losing a beautiful trophy from their arms. They need to feel other people's envy in order to be able to give themselves the freedom to feel worthy of love. And Taurus provides just that, justification for love, despite the immature levels of their relationship. Number 3. Gemini and Virgo Ugh. These two are the pinnacle of immaturity. As they're both mutable and both ruled by Mercury, their endgame has no end. These two are capable of Machiavellian plans, plays, and tricks on each other, all for the purpose of winning an imaginary contest of wits. Gemini will try and feed Virgo misinformation, false rumors, and toxic gossip in order to weaken their mental state and Virgo will leave booby traps around the house and pour the yogurt and shampoo and salt over Gemini's cookies. It's a good thing that most of these two's dramas will be behind closed doors, so not many people will be forced to witness them. However, their close friends and family might just be so fed up with it that they end up snapping and simply asking them, why don't you just break up? Or just get a divorce? As they're both intellectuals and highly logical signs, they might consider it. But that moment will soon pass, as both of them will fear that no one else will be able to bear either of them. Plus, the fear of boredom will keep them exactly where they are, at each other's sides. Because who else will tolerate all the crap they pull on each other? And who else would be able to amuse them so, even when they're crawling out of their skin because of it? Number 4. Libra and Sagittarius These two are the king and queen of trying to get each other jealous and accidentally cheating in the process. Both Libra and Sagittarius are extremely flirtatious. They thrive on sweet nothings whispered in the ear of a lucrative stranger. They both have trouble admitting just how much they care, and their defensive mechanisms are the same, 
flirt, smile, and sleep around until the emotions fade to black. What's odd is that they both want the same thing, but are afraid to admit it out loud. This is why they're prone to trying to make each other jealous. They'll go as far as making out with other people while making eye contact with each other. That's just their weird mating dance. Because they will end up with each other again, in the same bed, again, and in the same pattern, again. Even if there are other people in the bed with them, they'll still have eyes only for each other. All the while, in their mind, they're thinking they're competing with each other and keeping score of who swindled whom. This pair is really funny because they're so similar and have similar desires and needs. But in this similarity, they're unable to snap out of the loop and just be honest and straightforward with each other. These are the crazy kids of the Zodiac. Number 5. Scorpio and Capricorn This is perhaps the most dangerous and deranged pair of the Zodiac. Scorpio is a cunning sign that's capable of many misdeeds, but Capricorn is even worse. They just often don't get credit for it. These two are the epitome of the Cold War and silent warfare. They will keep each other very close because they think of each other as enemies. Both of these signs have strong stalkerish and espionage tendencies, so it's not weird that they both have each other under some kind of surveillance. They also like to keep tabs on each other when they're pretending to be working or doing something else, and they will, from time to time, get caught up enough in their own drama that they'll have a public display of discord. This pairing is not something that should be let out on the streets to walk freely. But hey, who are we to judge? Scorpio will have more forward and violent outbursts of jealousy, and Capricorn will gloat because Scorpio fell for their diversion. But then Scorpio will gloat because Capricorn fell for their obvious and overplayed act, and they're not suspecting the deeper and more fouler play that's at hand. Only these two can keep up with their drama and affairs. And number six, Aquarius and Pisces. This is the oddest pair of the Zodiac, and they're prone to some very odd and immature displays of emotions. Aquarius likes to play very cold and emotionally detached, and Pisces, despite being the total opposite, will gladly match Aquarius's vibe in order to get in their head. And they'll succeed because Aquarius is used to being the unbothered one. The trouble with Pisces is that they'll play their detached and cold-hearted roles so well that they'll lose all of their emotion in the end. And just then, Aquarius will start to seriously fall for them and will begin displaying signs of affection and love and Pisces will be just... numb. Then Aquarius will start acting out and Pisces will, once again, match the vibe and the energy of Aquarius, which will lead to a total circus and monkey show. Considering how odd both of them are, they won't care whether they're causing a public scene or not. They'll just say and act out their piece, whether dead or alive. That's how stubborn and immature these two are as a pair. Thank you for watching the video. Please like, share, and subscribe for all the updates.